And welcome back to Hannity. We are following major, major breaking news tonight. The Washington Post first reporting tonight. Fox News confirming the Clinton and the DNC. They, after lying for a year, helped finance the research for that fake news anti-Trump dossier. And also breaking minutes ago, Hillary Clinton's former spokesman, Brian Fallon. They're like racing. Perez is the first. Uh, I regret I didn't know about Christopher Steele's hiring pre-election. If I had, I would have volunteered to go to Europe and try to help him. Oh, really? Here with reaction is the author of Defeating Jihad, the Make America Great Again Coalition Chief Strategist, former Deputy Assistant to the President, Sebastian Gorka, Fox News legal analyst, Greg Jarrett. What I always love about you is you come with a, a, a with research on everything. You start where you want. Uranium One, the dossier. The confidential informant cannot be gagged. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court in a... But he's been gagged. He has a, a non-disclosure. But it does not prevent him from speaking to Congress. The U.S. Supreme Court said so. McGrain versus Doherty is the case. You cannot gag a witness when Congress wants to talk this to that This is why witness. I love Greg Jarrett for all of you at home. He always knows his stuff. All right, keep going. All right, uh, the Clinton dossier. What strikes me is that Christopher Steele... Uh, went to the went to Moscow and talked to the Kremlin and gathered false evidence. The Wait, victim he here, paid for it. Yeah, yeah. The victim here is the president of the United States now, and Hillary Clinton's campaign in the DNC was apparently paying for this for propaganda, right. for lies, for disinformation from the Russians during the campaign. Oh, Robert Mueller. Are you awake tonight? If there's if there's collusion, it's Hillary Russia collusion, not Trump Russia <sighs> collusion. You know, I've been predicting this, Dr. Gorka, this massive boomerang for a long time. I've known that a lot of this evidence was out there and that it was all coming. And I've been telling my audience it's coming. It's coming. Now where the floodgates are opening, if you will. It's like the, the last scene from that great Tom Clancy movie, The Hunt for Red October, where the bad submarine commander launches the torpedo and it comes back and it sinks his own vessel. That's what the Russian collusion story has done for the DNC and for Hillary. Let's stop using the word collusion because the evidence we now have is about subversion, it's about sabotaging the political process, and it's about propaganda. In the, in the Cold War, the Soviet Union used what was called active measures to undermine our democracy. This is the Democrat Party. This is the Hillary campaign using active measures to undermine Donald Trump and to undermine the democratic process in America. It is a shocking story. And, and what really stinks here is Mueller, Rosenstein, Andrew Weissman, and James Comey appear to have covered it all up, the Uranium One deal racketeering scheme of the Russians and money paid to Hillary Clinton and a sleeper agent getting close to Clinton. They never notified Congress. They have a legal duty to notify Congress. Congress would have stopped the sale of the asset. Why would you ever... Especially in light of everything the media and, and Democrats have been saying about hostile actor Vladimir Putin. Why, wh who in their right <laughs> mind would give Vladimir Putin 20% of America's uranium and then all the money that flowed back? It stunk to high heaven from day one. Now we just have the evidence. There are two so things you that. never sell to the Russians, plutonium and uranium, yeah. with which you make uh, nuclear weapons. Right. They have uh, 1,200 strategic nuclear weapons aimed at us right this minute. And we're supplying them the, the nuclear material? They I all mean, signed off on it. I and am. then all this money flows back to them. Sure. Dr. Gorka. That's the big part of the story. So the cover-up afterwards, the destruction of evidence, the gag order, that's bad in and of itself. But the fact is, these people who are supposed to be investigating this administration that has done nothing wrong, they were complicit Hillary Clinton approved this deal. We, we, they are making a big deal about $100,000 worth of Facebook ads by Russia, half of which occurred after the election. This isn't $100,000 worth of ads. This is stuff to make nuclear weapons being given to Vladimir Putin. Can we just ingest the enormity of what we're talking about now? This, this is a massive scandal. I have said, and I stand by this tonight, they sold 
out America's national security. Yes. And absolutely. And there's so much more to come. Let's talk about potential crimes. Jeff Sessions, who recused himself, you may recall, in his confirmation hearing from anything related to Hillary Clinton, he said it not once, not twice, three times, can still appoint a special counsel to investigate Hillary Clinton over Uranium One, her interference on behalf of UBS uh, with the IRS, and, and received an enormous amount of money to Bill Clinton and their foundation, and arms sales. All of that can be the subject of the special counsel investigation. And while you're at it, let's throw in the email case, because to me as a lawyer, oh. it is a clear case of the violation Mishandling. of the Espionage Felony. Act. Destroying evidence, right. felony, obstruction of justice, deleting, uh, breaking up. Uh, it uh, you would know. be 110 counts based on 110 classified documents. I want to go back, Dr. Gorka, you know, Bill Clinton's trip. He wanted to ask his own wife's State Department to approve meeting, meetings with Russian nuclear officials. Okay, that's insane. Gets double his speaking fee. He is being paid by a bank that has a renaissance, that has a financial interest in Uranium One. Then he does meet with Vladimir Putin, and his wife signs off on the deal, and then the $145 million kickback. Now, what other evidence do you need to know that they were not putting? the security of this country as their first priority? Well, you don't need it. It, it, it. Look, 108 emails of TSSCI, highest level SAP classification on a private homebrew server. You know, we, we, we expect this from the Clintons. They're the most corrupt political clan in modern American history. But the issue is how the establishment dealt with it under the Obama administration. How somebody who was a suspect in that investigation was allowed to be the counsel to Hillary Clinton. How the Blackberries were destroyed and how the laptops that the FBI had were also destroyed the by the federal government. That's a banana republic. We yeah, have to have right. Mueller. <laughs> Mueller has to be fired. And right now, AG Sessions has to have a national security special S prosecutor. S listen, Attorney General needs to wake up now. This is not a game anymore. Our security. Holder, Clinton, Mueller, Rosenstein, they all knew in 2009. Don't forget and they McCabe. approved the deal, Greg. And and Holder actually sat on the CFIUS committee, if you can believe he that. He was one of the ones that signed off, one of the nine. Yeah, it was a unanimous decision. Hillary Clinton presides over it. All right, guys, we'll have you guys back tomorrow, too. Welcome back to the White House, where there is a lot of buzz tonight about the latest investigations to hit political Washington. Congressional Republicans say there is evidence that something was amiss when the U.S. gave up a significant block of its uranium mining capability to a Russian-controlled company with ties to Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. And members of a separate committee, actually two, are now looking for answers from the former director of the FBI over his handling of the Clinton email probe and the decisions he made there. Democrats say it's all a diversion. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge has our story. Two powerful House committees opened investigations today into fired FBI Director James Comey and actions he took during the 2016 campaign, including a letter to Congress reopening the Clinton email case 11 days before the election. In May, days before being fired by the president, Comey refused to admit any error. Even in hindsight, and this has been one of the world's most painful experiences, I would make the same decision. The House Government Oversight Committee, led by Republican Chairman Trey Gowdy and House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte, are also putting the former Attorney General Loretta Lynch under scrutiny after Comey circumvented the Justice Department when he drafted what Republicans call an exoneration statement two months before 17 key witnesses, including Hillary Clinton, were interviewed. Lawmakers also question why Comey went public with the Clinton email case, but at the same time remained silent about the probe of Trump campaign associates. In a statement, Democrats accused Republicans of launching a massive diversion to distract from the lack of Republican oversight of the Trump administration and the national security threat that Russia poses. 
This is uh, just the beginning of this probe. In a separate uh, development, are, the House uh, Intelligence yeah, Committee's yeah, Republican yeah, chairman announced a joint investigation with the Oversight Committee into the 2010 Uranium One deal that gave a Russian company control of a large share of the U.S. uranium supply. Congressman Nunez questions what the Obama administration knew. Was there a DOJ investigation? And if so, uh, why was Congress not informed of this matter? The 2010 deal is under new scrutiny after an FBI confidential informant came forward, claiming there is evidence Russia sought to curry favor with then-Secretary of State Clinton and her husband through the Clinton Foundation. A gag order may soon be lifted. We're in contact with the Justice Department to release him from a non-disclosure agreement. Um, if that doesn't work out in, in timely fashion, then we obviously would be able to subpoena him. Republican Congressman Peter King denied the investigation is being driven by politics. I would just say on this, this is totally separate from the election issue. This has nothing to do with the 2016 election. This goes back to uh, dealings that went on in 2010, 2011. And President Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, met with House investigators today behind closed doors for about five hours after he told reporters it went well. Democrats accused Republicans in these sessions of running interference to help protect Trump campaign witnesses. Brett. Catherine Harris live on the Hill. Catherine, thank you.